production wise uh, in the pop world in the urban world um, the the level of demos that are expected in many cases not all uh, are expected to be more produced now and songs are largely built on production obviously you're aware that there are guys who are top liners or, or people that are top liners and that there are people who are um, more technically adept and they come together and they create something in Nashville when you go into a writing meeting is a little more pure where it's two people with guitars or pianos and you're not thinking about production or do you hear um, maybe like an EDM drum beat underlayment in something because you want to stay cutting edge and the audience is younger now? Do, do those factors come into play? Yeah, they do. I mean, I think more and more, um, like I'm writing with a lot of what we call track guys in Nashville, and so I might I might go in. That's where a lot of the 20-year-olds come in. You know, yeah. I may go in and he goes, oh, I've got this cool little loop going, and, you know, and we so we write to that and we may not wind up using that at the end but we start with that feel and one of the things I'm hearing publishers in Nashville say more and more is I need songs with bounce and I think they're talking about that hip hop sort of um, makes you bob your head you know kind of um, are they talking a hip hop beat to a country song or are they talking hip hop like you know the lack or big smile or something no they're talking about more of a hip hop beat with a country song okay you know so they're still wanting the country lyric, but they want a little bounce. I mean, that's the way they're describing it. Is I want, you know, I need something a little more bounce, you know. And, and if you bring in something that doesn't have that, people are tending to get the feedback. It sounds a little dated, you know, because there is so much of that going on. I'm glad you brought up the D word. Um, <laughs> it, it's a plague, and it's because most people fall in love with music when they're 15, 20 years old, and and to some extent they freeze there, and they write there. Mm-hmm. So how do you stay current? I, I know you already said you listen to a lot of radio or a lot of current records, but uh, it, as far as being current um, and being like 15% ahead of what's happening today, uh, does, does your brain now go to the beat? Are you hearing that little bounce when you write, even though you may not have a track person in the room? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm... I'm in ways that feel authentic to me because I like some of that stuff. You know, I like, um, for instance, Maroon 5's vocal phrasing. Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. So, you know, and there's some of that rapid um, kind of off. It's it's just not what you expect. Right, it's, it's not on the ones. So yeah. yeah, it's on and, the ends. And so, you know, I try to incorporate some of that into what I write. I've got a 16-year-old son, and I try to, you know, he's a big music lover, and he'll come play me the weirdest stuff but every now and then there's something I hear in it I go oh wow that's I could do that I could incorporate that into a, a song that I'm writing you know that kind of a vocal trick or a um, something in the production or a beat that I've never written you know and so I'm just always trying to be a student of different music and stretch myself so you know because otherwise everything I write would be like the Eagles right. or James Taylor you know <laughs> So you are my age. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not that different. I don't believe it's that much of a stretch, using your word, to become contemporary. But so many people are afraid to, and it just takes a little... It takes being conscious of it and a little bit of effort. And when people say to me, I don't like what I hear on the radio, well... You know, you were 16 once, and now your son is 16, and he's listening to radio. So programmers have, radio uh, program directors have to pay attention to that. Um, A&R executives have to pay attention to that. Publishers have to pay attention to that. Fashions change. Uh, With the exception of, like, Converse All-Stars, we are wearing (laughs) different shoes, you know? Exactly. And, And, I mean, things do come back. Um, clearly there's been a lot of stuff uh, with like 80s influence in the last couple of years I would say in pop radio do you guys see that creeping into country where you'll go back to an Mm -hmm. era and recycle old stuff yeah why not um, what's what's getting recycled now when I had must be doing something right there had been sort of a drought of R&B type country songs you know Conway Twitty 
used to do that kind of thing. And so there was a period where that was big, and then it kind of went away. And so when we came in with Must Be Doing Something Right with that R&B feel, people were like, oh, that feels fresh and new. We're like, no, it feels old, <laughs> but great. You know, so I think there's a lot of that. Thomas Rhett has had a couple songs that kind of feel like disco, you know, some disco yeah. elements and things like that, you know, or you can hear almost Bee Gees influence in some of I that. I love the Bee Gees. I'm a shameless fan of oh, the Bee Gees. Oh, me too. And so, I, you know, I think to me, if you, if you want to do it as... If you want to make money at it and you want to get other people to record your song, you've got to just be a sponge and take in the great stuff from music that's coming out now, the great stuff from music in the past, and figure out ways to make that contemporary, figure out ways to help people connect to that kind of thing. And so, and, and also, I, I have to remember, if I'm, I'm not writing for me, you know, if I'm writing for an artist to record, it's not about whether I love it and I would say it. It's about whether they love it and they would say it. And so I want it to have integrity and craft in what I write. Yeah. But it's a, a, I'm not the end user. You know, my pleasure with it is not the end goal. So many people feel like they've given up the art, artistic or creative side of what they do if. Um, if they're not writing for them, you know, if they're not just emoting and waiting for the muse to show up, I think that by learning craft and being aware of what you're doing at all times, that you're actually calling on a higher self. Uh, your create your creativity is being tapped. It's being stretched. It's being pushed. It's being pulled. It's it, you are asking yourself to rise above what comes easy. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's. That's hard. Yeah, we could but, sit down. You know, I could sit down every day and write something kind of like James Taylor would have written, but it's just it's going to lay there. You know. Yeah. So, I get big, it. I'm a big believer too that songwriting. There's really not so many songwriting rules. There's just communication rules, and it's when we break those that the song's not very good. And that the whole thing about craft with songs is just about learning how to communicate. Um, and, explain that a little more. Well, if well, an example I use a lot in my mentoring is uh, somebody will switch pronouns in mm-hmm. in the song, and so it'll be talking to a person, then it'll be talking about a person, and so I'll say, Michael, you've been a great friend to me. I really appreciate you having me on the TV show. He is just an awesome guy. You're gonna go, who's he? Mm-hmm. And I said, I love that you're saying this. So I said that's not a songwriting rule. That's just bad communication. And so if we learn how to communicate clearly, and, you know, the other way people do it a lot of times is they don't, they know the backstory, but they don't give me enough of the backstory. Well, that's not a songwriting rule. It's just bad communication. So if I start telling you, you know, well, she, she took me for a ride and stole all my money and whatever, you're going to go, who's she? You know, yeah, you tell, well, when did she you show did, up? Exactly. Why, why did she do that? Yeah. And so it's not a songwriting rule. It's just learning how to communicate in a way that's clear and, you know, lets you feel what I was feeling when I wrote it.